Thank you for the time. Natalie Gonzalez Sales, how you doing? Good, thanks. And you? I'm doing well. Heard you got a fight coming up. Yeah, that's right. So I leave on Saturday and the fight's in Manila in the Philippines um, next Friday 21st for one. So it's the Kings of Destiny card. You're from England, you reside in Sydney, and you're training for the fight in the Philippines here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yeah. Like I'm getting in your traveling? Yeah. Well, I'm a bit of a nomad. I was born in the Philippines, and I love competing in Asia, but I've been living in Sydney recently, and yeah, I grew up in England. Wow. You like the traveling. <laughs> I'm a bit of a gypsy. <laughs> that, that's just something you've embraced? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I was born in the Philippines and then I moved to England and then, uh, you know, I've been out of the UK since I was 21. Um, and, you know, I've just gone to different places to train different styles and I ended up in Sydney and now I've ended up in Albuquerque. So. <laughs> Yeah. How, how long have you been a martial artist for? Um, I started karate at eight. My dad got me into uh, Higashi style. He was training, and I did that till I was fourteen. And then I had a kind of break from martial arts. I played like hockey competitively and did gymnastics and, and swimming and that kind of thing. And I went back to martial arts when I was twenty-one, and I started boxing. What led you to make that transition back? Uh, I had like a really. Um, uh, there's a string of unfortunate events, so um, I got attacked while I was at work. I was working as a charity fundraiser, and um, I got attacked by like a gang. Um, it was like a racial, uh, with, like racial assault, and then uh, I also had some other things that happened. I didn't feel too uh, in control of my life or powerful, and um, I started boxing to improve my confidence. And, um, I started to do well. And the boxing gym also was an MMA gym, and so it was just a natural progression to try out the other classes. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then I started uh, training and competing in MMA. Now, what have you thought of doing this, going from all these different martial arts to combine them? Did you have a particular one that yes. you liked most of all? So, coming from karate, I picked up kickboxing, uh, you know, quicker. So, um, when I finished my degree, I uh, had an English and History degree in the UK, I, um, I didn't actually want to be a teacher <laughs> or do anything uh, with my degree in the end. And um, so, I went to Thailand to pursue Muay Thai. And so I had a couple wins uh, in Phuket and Bangkok, and then I went to Asia to try out some different styles. And um, in the Philippines, their national sport is harness, so I did some weapons training. Um, and I also studied Yao Yan, which is like uh, the, another Filipino martial art. Um, and from there, uh, I ended up in Sydney and, um, and ended up getting into MMA and combining you know, the different uh, styles that I've been um, you know, doing over the years. Normally we talk MMA a lot on our interviews, but yeah. weapons training? Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell me about the weapons training. Did uh, you? Was yeah. it something that you liked specifically? Um, yeah. So with the harness, you know, you, you use um, like knives and swords, and like there's some open hand stuff, you know, to disarm people. But I guess you know, um, from the Philippines, like uh, you know, it developed. Um, you know, in tribal times, you know, when the Spanish invaded, like, you know, uh, the original tribes would, you know, use that to defend themselves. So when I went there and I wanted to learn about my culture, like the first sort of martial art like I got into was, was honest. So, um, you know, there's that saying, guns for show, knives for a pro. <laughs> that's what I, uh, that's what I kind of liked. Um, but, you know, it's an art in itself and I haven't kept that up so much, you know, as I've gone into MMA. That was an amazing quote right there. <laughs> now, blending all these martial arts, getting into MMA and competing, did that speak to you? Was that a, a thought that you had right away when you started training that you wanted to take it that full level? Um, to be honest, when I first started, uh, you know, um, I was pretty shy and I didn't think about competing. But then I was doing well in my classes and it was like my coaches and teammates that were like, you know, you should do an interclub. And um, so I just did like a sparring day and um, my first like there wasn't many girls or you know people my size so, like the first two um competitions i did was you know had a, a girl that was like two weight classes higher than me and and i fought a dude once <laughs> so after having those experiences i was like oh you know I, I did good and you know i had this urge to test my skills and then that's where my um, competitiveness came from because before then i didn't think that you know i could um I'd be able to do do that, um, and I surprised myself. And then the more you know, I trained in martial arts, and the more I grew. And you know, as your physicality improves and your skill improves, you know, um, it just uh, it just kept driving me to, tr to test myself. And um, you know, I ended up going from amateur to pro, and then getting signed. And you know, I'm still I'm still on that journey. 
So I believe six fights as a professional? Uh, I've had five as a professional um, uh, in MMA and I didn't have much of an amateur career so you know the first fight I had it was only amateur rules but it went down as pro because it was paid so I really got thrust in the, the limelight pretty soon um, but you know I'm learning on the job. <laughs> <laughs> has that yeah. trial been fire been interesting kind of going out there and winging it right away yeah. it means a lot it, it's been like a baptism of fire so uh, you know um, I'm still uh, you know I still have you know, big goals um, you know I want about one day and um, I just think if this is like you know uh, like not an apprenticeship but you know like I'm just learning on the job it's hard to do it in front of lots of people but you know uh, I think I improve each fight camp and you know on the 21st it's like uh, my first fight back since my injury because I was injured last year which means I've been out of competition for a year um, but yeah and I want to come back I'm you know looking to get in that winning column and uh, I think it's time. Big opportunity, one championship, a big recognized organization. Tell yeah. us about the opportunity, your thoughts on it. Uh, so, yeah, it's a big opportunity. Um, it means a lot to me because when where I compete, um, it's an hour from where I was born. Last year, exactly in April time, I fought a girl from Team Mackay. This year, a year later, I fight another girl from Team Mackay in my hometown again. So, for me, it's a real emotional uh, opportunity. <laughs> But obviously when you go in there, like you can be an emotional fighter. So uh, I'm hoping that, you know, this time I'm going to be a lot more composed. And uh, it means a lot to me to fight there in front of, you know, my family and friends. And to kind of get a chance to do it again, you know, uh, to show how much I've learned the last year. I've rehabbed my injury, you know, it's just like the start of something, something big. You feel reinvigorated now and then it's a new camp, it's been new training? Yeah, this has been like the best decision I've made for my fight career. Like coming to Jackson's, having high level coaching and training partners every day, living on the dorms, um, you know, like everything's in one place. So like my training, recovery, everything's been streamlined. Like back home, I have a lot of different jobs, distractions, like here, coming here just like help me focus. And, you know, I feel, I feel ready, so. Uh, it's nothing to do here but fight and train, right? That's it, that's right. So, um, you know, when I go to Manila, I know I've done everything I can to prepare and, you know, uh, can't wait to get in there. And was that a, a big moment the first time meeting now, have that experience from the emotional side of walking in there and being there and it being your hometown and everything? Yeah, so having done it before, I think that's good preparation to do it this time. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it, there are some similarities in the story, but it's not it's not the same deal. Like I've grown so much, I've learned so much since then. And um, you know, coming coming back, uh, you know, it's just it's just another shot uh, and chance for me to like, you know sure that I, I deserve to be there. Your opponent coming from the same camp as your last opponent, obviously the coaches are going to be looking at you then. That's probably the same fighter, even less of a fighter coming back from an injury. Yeah. So you feel like you know what they're thinking pretty well? Uh, you know, like I have a lot of respect for their team. They also train at Altitude too. Uh, team Lakai, you know, being Filipino um, as well. Uh, you know, it's quite an infamous team. Um, so, no, I have respect for them, but, you know, if they underestimate me, that's good for me. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to go in there. I know what I'm capable of, and, uh, you know, this time's going to be different. What kind of mindset are you taking in there on this one? This time, you know, uh, I think uh, coming off losses, uh, and I'm such an aggressive fighter, like as soon as the bell goes, I'm the fast side of the starter. I think that I basically, there was, in my head, I just wanted to finish in an impressive way and just finish fast and this time I'm not gonna rush anything you know I know I can win if it takes me rounds I'm still gonna win um, and I'm just not gonna rush anything I'm just gonna be composed work my game and I'll get the win. Natalie thank you for the time. Thank you very much.